Oh, come on. Look, it's not a big deal. We just need to do a few of them again. It's just confusing if not. Uh, like the garbage man. Yeah, so you said that Alan Parfit was reported missing uh, in August 2009, which had actually be uh, six months after the statement had been given. Well, someone noticed. Uh, Josh Cole. Uh, great guy. He's one of the students using our resources for, for a dissertation. Um, oh, and here, in Miss Montauk's statement uh, about her father's killings, you refer to case... Um, uh, 9220611 as case um, uh, 11069.22. Oh, and uh, don't get me started on the other case numbers around the hilltop hauntings. They're a mess. Uh, well, actually, yes. Um, Samantha Emery, she's lovely. Uh, she's actually doing a PhD in manifestation. I... Um, uh, to be honest with you, uh, I don't really understand the system. Oh, okay. Alright, so what happens if more than one statement is given on the same day? Oh yeah, just one. So in case 816-3103, it isn't clear if Albrecht's wife is called Clara or Carla, because you keep switching back and forth. Well, I oh, it's, it's not a complaint. Um, I just noticed, actually. <laughs> um, look, okay. I know you've been under a lot of pressure. It's not a big deal. I just think it might be worth re-recording these statements. Actually, oh, whoa, read whoa, the damn whoa. thing. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, it's getting bad. I mean, uh, Martin keeps showing me his tongue, <laughs> asking if it looks infested. Um, so what do you want me to do about these errors? Oh, oh yeah, sure. Yep, I'll let you get back to it. Are you free? Oh, uh, nothing urgent. Um, it's just Elias was asking a couple of questions about the delivery. Uh, well, that's actually what he was asking. <laughs> um, apparently Martin uh, took a delivery of a couple of items last week addressed to you. Did he not mention it? Uh, what is it? You smoke? Okay, is there anything unusual about it? Uh, no, no. Oh, uh, yes, yeah, it was sent straight to the artifact storage, uh, table, uh, of some sort. Uh, looks old. Quite pretty, though. Fascinating design on it. Uh, uh, I don't know, maybe? Um, I'll be honest, I didn't really notice. It was quite... Um, uh, no, uh, sorry, no, I don't... Working? Uh, okay, test, test. What are you doing on the floor? Statement of Joe Spooky regarding sinister happenings in the downtown yes. Sasha? Oh. Hi guys! Funny story, really. I ran into the office. Worms everywhere, horrible death and everything. Tripped and fell into some boxes. And there were like 20 cans of gas in there. Fine, fine gas, bit lightheaded. Not yeah. a lot of ventilation in the tunnels. Come on. Yeah, actually, not that many worms in there anymore. I think they've mostly gone into the archive. Although the ones down here are faster for some reason. And quieter. No, I don't think so. Have a look. Then let's go. Why do you have a second tape recorder, Martin? Martin's Four. gone. He thought we were behind him, I think. In case the trapdoor opens back into the archives and Prentice is there to kill us. All right. Do you need much? I'd really like to go home. Sure. Just... quarantine, you know. Not as much fun as it sounds. Uh, yeah. I just made some joke about itching and... Suddenly they were doing a whole bunch more tests. I of... know. I know. I was trying to lighten the mood. I'm fine, though. Except for the holes. And the pain. And the blood. And the nightmares. Could have been worse, though, eh? Another couple of minutes and... Well, I could tell something was wrong as soon as I got back. It was quiet. I mean, it's normally quiet, but it was dead quiet. I spotted the tape recorder lying on the ground and went over to uh, see if it was damaged. And as I was checking it, I heard Sasha shouting. It's a bit of a blur, to be honest, because when I turned around, there she was. Prentice. Her face so full of holes, it's like 
my eyes are up here, but they're not, you know? They're just... <sighs> she tried to say something, but I don't know. I, I couldn't really understand her through all the... <sighs> so, I could see the worms were coming through the floor. The walls everywhere. The whole, we're safe inside the archive thing? Not so much. I don't know what I was going to do. I think I was going to try and hit her, but that's when Sasha knocked me to the floor. It's, it was a good move, actually. Prentice didn't seem to expect it, and we crushed a lot of worms when we fell. They were slow to react. And we were running before they really went for us. I mean, all this happened in the space of a few seconds, so I'm not exactly certain. Sasha had to basically drag me behind her. I saw the shelf in front of us was about to topple. There were so many worms on it, so being the hero I am, I let go of her hand and told her to go get help. She made it out of the main door. I turned to run into the office. I was just trying to get a door between me and Prentice. I didn't know that's where you made the first hole. There were loads of them. Some jumped at me as I ran inside, so I dodged out of the way, but ended up sprawling into this pile of boxes that I thought were case files. Instead, I found myself lying on top of a whole bunch of CO2 canisters, which are damn hard, by the way. The worms were still coming, so I used them. Uh, I mean, I went full gas Rambo. After that, my memory gets a bit fuzzy. I think the paramedic called it respiratory acidosis? from breathing in all the carbon dioxide rather than your more traditional oxygen. I remember finishing the first few extinguishers, killing the things, but they kept coming, so I grabbed a few more and saw the massive hole in the wall. There didn't seem much point in staying, so I went into the tunnels. They were cold. Dry. You know that worm smell, that earthy, rotten smell? Well, yeah. There weren't so many down there. I think they were almost all in the archives. I have a theory, actually. I think they weren't ready to attack when you found the tunnels. It's like something in the Institute slows them down and makes them, um, uh, <sighs> sluggish. And that noise they make, that squirming sound, they don't make it when they're in the tunnels. I don't know why. It was only when they came into the Institute, maybe the light, or the aircon, or something, I'm not sure, but I think it made them weaker, and they've been down there for months, breeding, building up their numbers until there were enough to properly bury us. Except you found that hidden passage, and they had to act. You were there. I remember they sloped down, and up, and around. I couldn't keep track of where I was. I did see some more worms, though. They were fast. I only saw a couple, but it was still proper jump-scare territory. I got them, though. It was really surreal. I only had my phone's torch, and it was hard to keep an eye out. I was so light-headed. I wandered for, I don't know, maybe ten minutes before I found a wall that seemed different. It looked like someone had just put some plasterboard over an entrance, and I could hear you and Martin on the other side. I broke through, and, well, you were there for the rest. No. I was quarantined, same as you. No. I did see... I mean, maybe... What? No, it, it's just... I think I was still gassed and it was dark, but... I found a room. I didn't stay long, because it had a lot of worms in, and they weren't acting like the others. They were sort of wrapping around each other like they were trying to form a thing, like a structure or something. A ring. I was probably still out of my skull and half hallucinated the whole thing, but it looked like they were trying to make a doorway. No. I pumped two full extinguishers into that room. Nothing was getting out. <laughs> yeah. Are you in trouble? Well, there was a policewoman asking after you. You know, the one who came to look into Gertrude. Uh, uh, yesterday. You were at physical therapy. No. It was a bit weird, really. I've seen her around here a few times before, actually. I, um... I don't trust her. Well, I asked if she had anything new to report on Gertrude, and 
She just said no and then mumbled a question about when you'd be back. Then she left. It was weird. She's weird. Well, you do know I'm the finest cat burglar in all of Bromley. Okay, so seriously, I don't get why she keeps coming back round here outside of the investigation. Oh. Oh. Say no more. Yeah. Don't worry. I'm cool. Good work, boss. I'll go see Not what I... if I can dig anything else out on it's Scott, really and I'll let you know I... if she comes back. Yeah. Look, I tried talking to Elias about it, but it doesn't seem to do any good. And it's that he's been... No, because I didn't start stalking my co-workers. Sure, like he doesn't already look at me like I'm a murderer. We need to do something. That's kind of one of the things we wanted to talk about. You were watching my house. You still don't believe us, do you? Seriously, listen to yourself. What? Hey, where did you put the... Oh, sorry. Didn't mean to disturb you while you were being suspicious. No, I'll catch you when you're not scheming. What? No. What did you say? Oh, but they have, have they? Things have been difficult. You spent a month staring at that footage, double-checking every moment, timing every tea break, looking at me like I somehow staged it, but no, you're right. Things have been difficult. It just Excuse me. Shut enough. up. Shut up. Just stop talking. I'm sick of this. I'm sick of you. We didn't kill Gertrude. And no one wants to kill you, you pompous idiot. No, no. You listen for once. I was fine in research. Happy. Then you ask me to be transferred here and suddenly it's all monsters and killers and secret passages. Oh my. And the worst thing? The actual worst thing is that no one here has my back. With any of it. Elias doesn't care. Martin just wants a tea party. And Sasha... Oh, and, and you! You're treating me like I'm somehow to blame for it all. Like I didn't suffer the worst right alongside you. Your Maybe. experiences? Fuck you! I got eaten by worms because of you. You know what? Yeah, a little bit of basic sympathy would have been nice. Oh, guys. but you went off the deep end afterwards, didn't you? Everything went to hell, and when you actually needed to be in charge, you just hid down here and played with your tape recorder. Well, what? Anything. Anything that wasn't turning into a paranoid lunatic would have been fine. Anything that showed you could actually do your job. Elias should have fired you weeks ago. After everything you've pulled, you should be gone. But no, instead, we all get to talk about how you're feeling, because we're worried about our stalker boss. I... I, I can't do this anymore! Are you firing me? I want to. I... Can't. I... I can't. I don't know. Why can't I quit? What? I don't understand. So, what do we do? I don't want to. I, uh, suppose I'll see you later. You wanted to see us? Wouldn't it make more sense if you went home then? <laughs> Guess that's a word for it. Because you're ill. Okay. You... Right you are, John. We'll be going. Come on, Martin. We could do with a break. Uh, do you need us to tell Wait. Sasha? I'll oh. see you Monday. Yeah, and then he said, sorry for everything. Something's up. I don't know, but he's going to do something and it's going to be bad. And I don't mean like sneaking a cigarette bad, like properly bad. We need to stop him. Because uh, something tells me we're going to need evidence by the end of today. I don't want to wind up in court without something to back me up. Yeah, a uh, tribunal if we're lucky, inquest if we're not. Yeah, I, I took one off the pass. It was blank. Don't get my hopes up. And he's gone. Thought so. I don't know, Martin. I, I think he's going fully off the deep end is what I think. If he hasn't already... Oh, got that, did you? Martin! What do you think is happening here? This isn't office politics. It's not like he's had one too many at the Christmas party and started ranting about the Greeks. Whatever is happening here, it's literally supernatural. No, it isn't a little, you know. There is something in this place and it's messing up our heads. It watches us all the time. It stops me quitting. I'm pretty sure it would stop Elias firing John, even if he decided to actually try running this place for once. Hey. I'm sure. No. Wait. I used to, but now I think it's worse. What the hell was that? What the hell was that? <laughs> oh, don't say it. Oh, that wasn't Sasha. He told her to go home, like us. And she did. <sighs> no. No. Not happening. Yeah, we can. Martin. <sighs> My, I, I'm not coming down there with... <sighs> Fine. I thought I heard something up ahead. Will you shut up about that? It wasn't anything like her. We 
was never going to find him down here. Uh, Elias is probably still in his office. Yeah, well, he's better than nothing. I, I'm not just going to leave you down here. Oh, for God's sake, this isn't about you. All right, fine. Fine. What do you want? What's your light at the end of these spooky damn tunnels? And don't say everyone happy forever, because that's not happening. Well, fine. Okay, okay. okay. Look, let's keep going. There's, there's nobody here. Stay back. What are you doing down here? What? Martin? Martin, look at his hands! Go! Where the hell are we? Where the hell are we? I don't think we're under the Institute anymore. I'm trying to not to think about it. It makes my head feel weird. Uh, uh, right. Let's go right. I think it's working again. Yeah, it's recording. Yes. Because the tape works now. I don't know. I don't care. This is us now. Worms. Monsters. Corridors. They'll keep happening until one of them kills us, and we've just got to deal with it. Any sign of the woman? No. Now! Look. Look, there's no point talking about it. It happened. I hope it doesn't happen again. The statement fucking ends. How days, at least. Probably already killed him. Fine. Try's office. I told you he was going to do something like this. I told you. Yeah. No, you can turn it off. <laughs> Seems about right. Look, just, just leave it on, or do you want to do this somewhere else? Suppose you want my statement? No. <laughs> Look, if I knew, I'd tell you. We haven't talked too much lately. No. You think she's dead? <laughs> Sounds right. More bodies for the archive? <laughs> yeah. Don't take a job here. So, or maybe, she just hates it here. Like a normal person. She's dead, Martin. Come on. Even you're not that blind. He got her too. I didn't. It was that detective. You, you tried talking to her about it? Makes sense. Fine. If it wasn't him, it must have been that thing we saw. It you did. Said. You know it did. But maybe it ate her. Maybe it was her. Maybe she was always some messed up mutant, and we just never noticed. Could have been Michael. I mean, it basically told us it was working with John. When you disappear, and there are more than three different ways you might be dead. Look, I'm sorry. It's just this place. Bad things happen, and eventually you don't come back. I'm going to lie down. Statement of uh, Benjamin Hatendi or Hatindi regarding uh, uh, blanket, uh, dead friend, monster, regarding his unavoidable and gruesome end. How he tried to hide, he couldn't. Statement is from 1983, March 2nd, and I guess, I guess I'm doing this one. Tim Stoker, archival assistant, archival prisoner, at the Magnus Institute. Statement. My parents never let me have a nightlight. I was always afraid, but they would just... Oh, this is stupid. This is stupid. Look, if, if anyone's listening to this useless tape, it was stupid when John was doing it, and it's stupid now. I mean, I mean, just, what's the point? We might as well be engraving them on wax cylinders. D whoever's listening to this right now, you're wasting your time. And if you work for the Magnus Institute, get out, if you can. I mean... That's what really pisses me off, you know? You spend so long getting used to a jo- Uh, come in? Right. Right. I know who you are. Yeah. Yeah, you work here now. It's not you. It's his fault. He didn't warn you properly, and now you're trapped here. With us. Yeah. He tried. <laughs> sure. If you ignore all the corpses, and the monsters, and the disappearances, we don't. Martin's not big on change. I don't want anyone to be here. You're suspicious and resentful, right? Welcome aboard. Wait. Tell me about the two Sashas. What did she look like? The first Sasha. What? 
What was she like? No, I... I think I understand. Who am I even sad for? Um... I... I'm gonna... I'm gonna lie down. Um... Can you record this for me? Uh, it's part of your job now. I guess the tape's already running. Hey boss, what brings you down to the dungeons? Your office just too full of joy? Right? Nope. Wasn't sick. Try again. No, I had not. I hopped a flight to Malaysia and found myself a hotel. Yeah? I... I got sick. The longer I was gone, I felt weak, like... Like I was, I was losing myself. You gonna fire me, boss? Of course not. You do know, right? I mean, I mean, you must know. About this place. About what it does to us. I think I prefer asbestos. Yeah. I mean... Maybe you're right. Yeah, it's all already running. Yeah, what's the, I... What's happening? Oh, Christ, what is it now? What? Oh, sorry, sorry, no. Sorry, sorry. Oh, God. God. I, damn it, this is... Don't do it. Yep, that sounds about right. You get used to it. Oh, sorry, uh, uh, didn't know you were here. No. Still doing those. And he said no for a mysterious reason? Uh, no. You, and I suggest that he not be a scary magic psychopath. Whoops. Too late. Sorry. Look, it's not that. I... Uh, <sighs> this place is evil, Martin. And I think doing what it wants probably makes us evil. And it wants those things to be read. I mean, I'm not going to stop you, but I, at the I, same I, time... I look, have you talked to John about them? Jealous. <laughs> kind of. We tried to talk, but he he reached for that... Uh, he, he wanted to turn on his recorder. I freaked out a bit, and I said some stuff. If he wanted to talk, no tapes. I just... I just hate that thing. You? He's an idiot. Look, we didn't know what that door was, and it still trapped us. Ignorance isn't going to save anyone, isn't it? Yeah. Maybe. But Elias wasn't actually the one who offered me the job down here. L listen, I, uh, I've got to go. I've got... stuff to do. Right, so... Tape's on. Who are you? Just Smith. Your name's John Smith. Right, okay, good. And... Why are you here, Mr. Smith? Shouldn't you be going to the police? Potentially. Right. And so, what, what brings you here? What do you need help with? Right. And can we talk about why it is specifically that you're here, Mr. Smith? I do. Right. What drove you to break into a tube station, Mr. Smith, and you wanted to see the interesting things. Right, okay. But why specifically there, Mr. Smith? They. Okay. And who are they? What people are down in the tunnels, Mr. Smith? <sighs> the government. Wonderful. Mr. Smith, I think you might possibly be looking for a different agency. Well, I, I... It's possible you should take that to someone else, well, Mr. Smith. You're... Statement ends. Sorry. I've been moving boxes in here for a while. Yeah. Everything all right? Right? We'll see ya. Mm. Yeah. Why? The what? Well, am I supposed to know what that is, or, you or what? Well, they haven't. What? are you talking about? Martin, what is the unknowing? And what does it have to do with the circus? <laughs> no, 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 we haven't. There hasn't been a circus statement since Leanne Denikin's last year, and that was a dead end. There's... someone would have told me. Someone it for a while. should have told me. Right. Turn it off. Turn it off. No, Hear I it. don't. Care. I don't want his help, Martin. And what? I'm supposed to just trust Elias now? <sighs> Fine. Fine. I'll tell him in person when he gets back from wherever it is that he's vanished to. Statement of Timothy Stoker on the disappearance of 
my brother Danny four years ago. June 14th, 2017. Statement begins. My little brother Danny. He was always better than me. He was a couple of years younger, but by the time he hit 21, he was already taller, fitter, better looking. I mean, he didn't have my winning sense of humour, but he didn't need it. Charisma, it wasn't a problem for him. I think a lot of people in my situation would have been jealous, but not me. I was just proud of him. I was always doing some, some charity race or endurance course, getting modelling gigs while I worked quietly away in publishing. It made me smile. I remember he actually got a job doing some publicity shots for the company that owned my local gym. And there was a good five months where whenever I walked down to my offices, there he'd be, twice as large as life, smiling down from a poster and challenging me to take them up on their joining fee, <laughs> or lack thereof. I never did, but it always brought a smile to my face when I saw it. We didn't really talk much, me and Danny. We were still pretty close, and he'd usually keep me updated on whatever his latest obsession was. He tend to throw himself into a thing completely for about six months, and well, then he'd get bored, and something new would catch his eye. Like, um, back in 2013, it was urban exploration. He'd come down to London, stay with me for a couple of days, and we'd end up having drinks with uh, Abigail Ellison, who's a mutual friend of ours from back home. Abby had been doing the urban exploration thing on and off for a few years, and was telling us a few of her close calls in some of the sites down near the old Docklands. As she talked, I was just watching Danny's eyes light up, and I knew exactly what was happening. His passion for sailing was starting to wane after almost a year, and I was sure I was watching him discover his next project. When Abby mentioned she had a trip lined up for the old Millennium Mills in Newham, well, it was pretty much a done deal. At the time, I quite liked the idea. It wasn't the weirdest thing to ever catch Danny's attention. <laughs> Not by a long shot. And secretly, I thought he and Abigail would maybe make kind of a cute couple. So I was quite encouraging. Not that he needed it. It's weird, isn't it? The things that can change your life. You can plan for all the devastating, terrible possibilities you can imagine. And it will always be those tiny, unexpected things that get you. You know, the things that you never even noticed as they were happening, just, just nudging everything into motion. But even if there was a way I could have known, I really don't think I'd be able to have stopped him. So, for the next few months, that was it. My cool little brother was an urban explorer. It suited him. I got used to my phone buzzing at my office desk as he filled it with pictures of his smiling face in front of some I don't know, rusted machine or hidden tunnel. He never did get together with Abby, but I'd only took a couple of trips with her and he'd learned what he needed. He talked a few of his friends into it, like always, started going on trips further afield. I thought he'd be down in London more than he was, but it turns out there are even more interesting, abandoned places up north. They tend to be less guarded than they are down here, so that was where he spent most of his time. There was one thing that did draw him down to London, though, and what he referred to as ghost buildings. There might have been some official name in the urban exploration community, I don't know. He stopped using the jargon around me after I joked that Urbex sounded like a brand of drain cleaner. What he was talking about was the places where newer buildings had been constructed in or, I don't know, over the remains of an earlier one, but development had left some of the old pieces intact. Sometimes it was just a wall or two, made out of different material, but occasionally there'd be an entire hidden basement or bricked up room. I don't know why, but Danny loved them. He'd talk for hours about 
crumbling pieces of history desperately clinging on to existence, but to be honest, I never really got it. I guess I didn't have to. Anyway, according to him, London had more of these ghost buildings than anywhere else in the country. He'd been exploring for a few months when he first mentioned Covent Garden Theatre. It had been destroyed by fire twice since it was first built in 1732, and well, he was convinced that the current building stood on top of floors and floors of hidden and abandoned ruins. The discarded cocoons of its previous life, as he once put it. <laughs> he showed me maps and measurements, a few photo sets from others who'd apparently been there before. I never asked him to, but well, when he was excited he just wanted everyone else to share it. That was... that was Danny. He was just... like that. While he was talking about the second Theatre Royal in Covent Garden, uh, the one that lasted less than 50 years before it burnt down, that was when I first heard the name Robert Smirk. All through this, I was trying to talk him out of going, because, well, what had once been the Covent Garden Theatre is nowadays known as the Royal Opera House, which is about as far from an abandoned building as you can get, and I really didn't think that trespassing there would be a good idea. But Danny didn't want to hear it. He wasn't going into the main building, he told me, and had figured out a route he claimed would lead him into the abandoned levels below without crossing anywhere that might actually attract security. And he was going alone. So he didn't need to worry about attracting too much attention. I told him it was a bad idea, but I'd never been able to stand in the way of his confidence. So late on Wednesday night in August 2013, my little brother went to break into the ruins hidden under the Royal Opera House in Covent Garden. <laughs> it sounds so ridiculous to say it out loud, but there it is. I don't know how long he was gone. I went to bed around one in the morning and he hadn't gotten back. It was a hot night and I woke up a few hours later needing a glass of water. There were the first hints of dawn filtering in through my living room windows, giving it this quiet, otherworldly feeling. Danny was sat in my big armchair, completely still. I smiled, feeling suddenly a little bit unsettled and trying my best to hide it. And I'd asked how it had been, but he didn't answer. I asked him if he'd found anything, and he nodded slowly. I saw as he tilted his head that his cheeks were just wet, with tears. He mumbled something then, very quietly, and I couldn't really make it out, but it sounded like the name Joey. It was all kind of surreal, strange, and I started to think I might be dreaming, but I'd never seen him cry before. I tried to talk to him, find out what was wrong, but he just kept shaking his head. We sat there in silence for a long time. I didn't know what to do. The whole situation was so alien. I thought maybe I could try and get him some rest, let him collect himself, so after some coaxing, I got him onto the couch. As he laid down, I heard him say something else. I thought it sounded like the show must go on, and at that moment, you know, I actually thought that was a good sign. I watched for a few more minutes until he was asleep, and then I went back to bed though it was a while before I fell back to sleep. That night was the last time I ever saw Danny. When I woke up a few hours later, he was gone. He left no note, no hint of where he may have gone, and the only thing that showed he'd been back at all were a small pile of sketches he'd drawn on some scrap paper from my printer. On each there was a clown, the same clown, a shock of dark hair, vertical on the top of his head, porcelain white face, bright red lips painted in a wide, pointed smile, and a crimson diamond running down each cheek from just below his eyes. The lips may have been smiling, but the mouth my brother had drawn was dark, an empty circle that made me feel cold. I should have called the police. Well, maybe not now I've met some of the ones who've dealt with these cases, but I shouldn't have followed him. I shouldn't have checked the notes Danny left about where to get in and what to watch out for en route. There's never really any hope for me though, was there? 
This was how it was always going to go. Danny's notes were very comprehensive. Finding the entrance to the old, disused part under the Royal Opera House wasn't nearly as difficult as I thought it might be. He hadn't reattached the chain he'd broken to get in, and it didn't look like anyone had noticed to replace it. The entrance stood open, and even though it was the middle of the day, it became almost completely dark as soon as it crossed the threshold. I think he must have done some work on the hinges too, because even though I could see the rust eating through them, the door opened in complete silence. I stepped inside. Back then, I didn't know enough about Robert Smirk's architecture to recognise his work. I just thought it was a really well-preserved sub-level. The corridors were wide and solid, and my torch showed columns that were that regular geometry that I've come to recognise. Compared to the summer heat outside, the air was cold. I found myself shivering in just my t-shirt and shorts. The whole place looked spotless, a lot cleaner than any pictures I've ever seen of urban exploration or abandoned sites. I couldn't really see why the Royal Opera House above wouldn't use this space, why they just let it sit here untouched and hidden behind a locked and unmarked steel door just off of James Street. I was still wondering about this when I walked into the auditorium. At the time, I wasn't exactly sure what I was looking at, but I've now seen pictures of the Second Theatre Royal in Covent Garden, the one designed by Smirk. I can say it was identical. A perfect recreation of the old stage and tiered seats, the decorations and the boxes. There are only two differences. That it was almost 20 feet below the ground where the original stage was, and that everything from the floor, to the seats, to the blank and faceless audience, was entirely hewn out of crude stone. There was no light except for the headlamp I had taken from my brother's pack, and it swept over a full house, four levels of unmoving stone watches, two thumb-sized indentations focused towards the stage. There was nothing that indicated they were any newer than the rest of the place. I walked down the steps to the edge of the top level, where I'd entered, and I looked down towards the stage. My lamp barely illuminated the single figure that stood on it. It was Danny. At least I, I think it was. It looked like him. Same hair, same clothes. There was something not right about how he looked. Like he was smaller somehow, slightly folded in on himself. It didn't matter. I shouted down to him to let him know I was there. He didn't look up, but when my voice echoed around the stone theatre, I knew I'd made a horrible mistake. From somewhere above me, a spotlight suddenly turned on, shining down onto the stage, painfully bright against the white stone. The air became uncomfortably hot, and there was some sort of music. The spotlight wasn't on Danny. Instead, picked out a figure crouched in the corner, all ruffles and polka dots and tights, a clown. It crouched and contorted in the corner, hands backwards over its face, but not so much that I couldn't see the dark red patterns that seemed to flow down its eyes. I couldn't move. Slowly, so slowly. Its right arm reached out towards Danny. It placed its hand on the floor with a long, low groan, then pulled itself along the floor, the fabric of its colourful dress scraping the rough stone of the stage and its cheek rubbing against the ground, leaving a trail of red behind it. Then it was still for a second, before a leg reached out in front and it began to drag the rest of the clown behind it. I always tell myself there was some force there. Something that held me in place and meant that all I could do was watch. But sometimes when I think back, I remember how my legs shook and maybe I could move. 
Maybe I'm just a coward. The clown reached my brother, who still hadn't moved an inch, and unfurled to its full height. The red on the cheeks was now clearly blood, and something black oozed down from its shock of hair. They took Danny by the hand and looked up, right at me, smiling like nothing has ever smiled since. Shall I? he asked with a voice so full of playful mischief that I felt bile rise in my throat. I wanted to shake my head, say no, but I never got a chance. With a single, smooth motion, like whipping the tablecloth off in a restaurant, he pulled the skin off of whatever had been pretending it was my brother. I don't know how to describe it, it was like an impressionist painting of a dancer, all colours and shapes that made you feel movement you couldn't see, silently, imperceptibly moving from one position to another. The music had stopped, and the dance was silent, and it was beautiful. The next thing I remember was the cool night air on my face as the Opera House patrons pushed past me to get into the evening performance of Tosca. In my hands I held an old black and white circus flyer. It was written all over in Cyrillic, but in the bottom left corner was a certain clown's face, leering out at me, billed as the guest performer. As I watched, it crumbled to ash and floated away on the breeze. To the auditorium, no. If I had, I'd... I don't think they'd let me leave a second time. I thought I might be able to find something about what happened, but... I guess at some point I stopped seriously looking and started to just get comfortable. Mm. Until the archives. Yeah. I, I know. It didn't take too much looking around to match the description of Victorian London's most famous clown. Joseph Cromaldi, Covent Garden Theatre regular. But yeah, it's him though. Or it looks like him, or his ghost, or something. I don't know why, but I think he's with the Russian circus. You reckon they're trying to what? End the world? And no one told me. Oh, well, Tim. I am now. I don't care about the rest of it. If anyone's gonna find that circus, I'm coming too. You're not gonna stop me. <sighs> Great. You were watching then. Surprised you didn't know it already. That's your thing, isn't it? All right. Hit me with your x-ray eyes then, boss. What do you see? Oh, terrifying. Surely only magic could have let you see so deep inside my very soul. Oh, oh sure. I'll just forget about it. Go back to sulking in a corner. Don't worry about me, boss. I'll just stop. It's what I'm best at, right? Don't want to get in the way of your evil plans, do I? Oh, oh, you mean it? Oh, well, that's different. Okay, well, let me tell you what. If you want me to ignore everything that's going on, forget my brother and everything that's happened over the last two years, how about you kill me? Or me either. But here we are. So my proposal for you is this. Either kill me or fuck off. Then I guess I'll see you in hell. That'll piss off. Oh, God. Good to see you, boss. How have you been? Good. Me? Oh, I've been just fine. I'll see you later. Nothing with that thing here. No. What? Don't do that. Sorry. Don't. And you know what I think. It's that the thing that runs the Institute, the Watcher, or the Eye, or whatever. Elias, then. Why are you so set on having it running? And I don't. What Listen to it then. My statement. A bit of an invasion of privacy. <laughs> Isn't it just? How did you know I was going to be here? Okay, whatever. But how did you know I was going to be here now? You just did. Great. 
buy one spooky telepath manager, get one free, is it? Fantastic. Oh, and how about you read my mind Tim, now? Because I can give you a clue. It ends in off. So why don't you archivist me then? Just pull it straight out. <laughs> like that matters. These things aren't human. It's instinct. You can't not. You know what? You're actually right. You're the only one. Do you know why I avoid the others? No. How can I be sure who they are? You know oh. how long that thing pretended to be oh, Sasha? God. And I had no idea. I knew Sasha for years. We... I don't know Martin as well as I knew her. I barely know what Melanie and Basira look like or that weird murder cop. How the hell am I supposed to be sure of any of them? I mean, there's worms and hallways and clowns and in some ways it doesn't even register. Like just another spook. But I can't trust them. I'm gonna destroy the circus that took my brother and I can't trust them to help. <laughs> well, if you're trying to spy on us, you're doing a pretty shitty job. You haven't been here for months, <laughs> which is not a good look for a spy, is it? Anyway. You're a spook too now, aren't you? This place loves you too much to let you get swapped. Oh yeah, great idea. Let's just all trust Elias. Screw it. I know where they're doing it, the, the ritual. And I think they're almost ready, in the House of Wax in Great Yarmouth. I had to wait almost two weeks, but it's there. Skin, that's what they need, right? They tried to take yours, well, Last week they went on a couple of field trips to a pair of cemeteries. New graves, no flowers. The first had a name on, but no dates, no inscription. George Icarus Gertrude. Yeah, I guess not. So, what's the plan, boss? Oh yeah, fine. But you don't cut me I out. Oh, uh, uh, right. So, and you? Good. Yup. Sounds like fun. You reading my mind again, boss? What? Look. If you're worried I'm gonna go all red rum and start hacking at random waxworks, don't be. I'm not gonna give us away. I want this to work, but I don't think it will. So, I'm gonna take that axe of yours and when it all goes wrong, I'm going down swinging. And when I do, you better take the chance and stay out of my way. All right, I don't know what you are. I don't even know if you're listening, I don't care. Just if you're there, I want you to know that I hate you. I hate you for, for witnessing what's happened to us. I used to blame my brother for going off on one and poking around where he wasn't wanted. I used to blame myself for not helping him, but now, now it doesn't matter. I've read through enough of these things to know that this doesn't matter. The only thing you need to have your life destroyed by this stuff is just bad luck. Talk to the wrong person. Take the wrong train. <laughs> open the wrong door. And that's it. I'm gonna hurt them though. I'm gonna hurt the thing that stole my brother and wrecked my life. I'm the distraction. If it looks like any of the Circus folk, mannequins, whatever, are gonna see the others, I'm to make the biggest mess I can. Draw them away. Keep them busy. <laughs> I know what it means. They gave it to me because they think I'll get angry and do something stupid anyway. And they're probably right. So maybe it's for the best. <laughs> you know, for the longest time I thought the secret was in balance. In some dusty old architect's work on symmetry. <laughs> but he failed, didn't he? What was he even trying to achieve? He lived like anyone else, he died like anyone else. Whatever he was looking for in his balance and fear, I don't think he found it. From what I can tell, there's only one person who's ever managed to hurt them. To really hurt them. And that's Gertrude Robinson. She was cold, ruthless, and she hit them when they were vulnerable, and she sacrificed a lot of people to do it. Honestly, 
I hope that John learns something from her because... Because I don't expect I'm going to be coming back from this. I don't know if I want to. And if he needs to pull the trigger to use me to stop it, well, he'd better have the guts to do it. Timothy Stoker, August 4th, 2017. <laughs> Statement ends. Tough. Is this it? Same as the last time you asked. Don't fret it. And anyway, it's not like we're alone in here. <laughs> Look, there's Prince Charles. If he'd been in an accident, uh, all the Beatles. If they'd all been in separate accidents, like, like Ringo was in a horrible fire, or, or Paul was in a car crash. That's a classic. Get them with an axe. The others didn't take this long. How hard can it be to blow up one building with all this stuff? All right, fine. We should know what's going on. How close they are. Are you sure it's through there? We need to see what's going on in there. Just what are you? Christ. All right. All right, on three. Three. Holy. What is it? What, so we're just going to leave them to be skinned well, alive? What, you, you, you brought me in as a distraction, right? Let me do it. Go in. Maybe you can get some of them. That's not what this is. No. You knew I might not be coming back. Except for those people in there. Not all of them. Look, John, this isn't right. Where's... No, no! Get away from me! Everyone is. This isn't... Just get back. I don't. No, do I? It's too late. There's nothing. So what's your name? Huh? Who exactly is me? Bullshit. Here is just... I don't believe you. Get back! I said get away! No, all you! All of you! I see my asshole boss! Wait, wait, Grimaldi. It's... I don't... The... The... The detonator. Go on. I'll race you. See if you can do it again before I can squeeze. So come and take it. That's what I thought. Back! Get back! That's right. John, I don't know if you can hear me, but if you can, I don't forgive you. But thank you for this. I don't care, but I can hurt you. You sound stressed. You know, I hear the great Grimaldi's in town. You should go see him. Cheer yourself up. I know. Happy birthday, boss. Snitch? Well, that's the idea. <laughs> yeah, as a decoy. No, he's way too jumpy as it is. We were worried he might damage himself. Hey! Maya. We just wanted to do something to lighten the mood, you know? Double boss. How did you... Martin, that was a secret. Well, it's good to see you. Well, does someone need to change their password again? Of <laughs> course not. Uh, yeah, you did. <sighs> all right, all right, well, I guess the cat's out of the bag now anyway. Look, just give me a second. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Right. Happy birthday, yes. dear Jacobus. Happy birthday to you! Right, Yay. yes! Oh goodness! A source of ignition? In the archives? <laughs> Uh-oh! Oh! Whoops! Sorry, my hand slipped. And again, and again, and a couple more times here. I'm so clumsy today. That is a lot of I'm fire. Really so grumpy today, isn't he, Martin? Do well, you think it's his looming sense of mortality. So, what did you wish for? Well, after the party, at least. Wine? Anyone? Tim, it, yeah, at your birthday party. Oh, yeah. I just thought it might be nice. You know, something to look back on when we're all old and sick of each other. What, are you afraid we're going to get sued over the happy birthday song? All right, all right, fine. Look, I'm turning it off. Any last words for your future selves? <laughs> oh, thank God. I thought I was seeing things. I didn't know he was actually going to ask me to get it for him. I just mentioned it because he was talking about recording. You can wait a bit longer. Uh, I, I didn't actually... Rabbit. Fine. What are we doing? If you say so. So, how are you finding our new leader? Sure. Sure. 
Do you think he knows what he's doing? If only there had been someone more qualified. That's your... Some sexist bullshit is what it is. It should have been you, and you just know if you had called him out, the little weasel would start talking about traditions and the values of our esteemed founder, Jimmy Magma. Joni Magnum? Jack Magnet. Uh, I'm serious though. You should say something. Uh, yeah. What if we kill him? No. Big Boss Sims. Cut the brakes on his office chair. No one would ever know. <laughs> Swap in a poison tea bag. Pin it on Martin. The perfect crime. <laughs> oh, it's okay. I spent the last few years building up an immunity to Iocane powder. So what are you gonna do? What? Seriously? Just jump ship? I can't believe you just abandon our intense will they won't they storyline like that. Hey. No, 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 no. See, we had the ill-advised hookup, the awkward aftermath, and the gradually rebuilt friendship, but that's all season two stuff. We've got like five more seasons before we get the heartwarming epilogue that makes it canon. What? Wow. You are vicious today. Yeah. Wait. How do you know about that? Okay, but seriously, you cannot let Martin know. He'll think I told you and I swore to keep Stum. Well, I'll miss you. Oh, for God's sake. Oh, Tim's so hard to talk to. Seriously, he won't stop making jokes and references. Not like Sasha. They've got no idea. Seriously though, everyone thinks you're just this reliable down-to-earth nerd. So what? Actually, I'm the one who doesn't get to see the real you? As what? Alright, Stanislavski. You really believe that? I do. Hey, I'll have you know, I have a rich inner life. Yeah, yeah. I still can't believe Gertrude was allowed to let this place get into such a state. What do you mean, why? You saw her, she's like a hundred years old and more cardigan than woman. She just started to lose it. Sad but it happens. Well, I mean, I must have at some point. Why? What was she like? Sasha! Oh yeah, this is all a big geriatric conspiracy. Wait, seriously? What possible reason could she have for being criminally incompetent in a manky old archive? Well, tell you what. If you get eaten alive by improperly filed statements, me and Martin will avenge you. I mean it. We'll burn this place to the ground, it'll be all like, SASHA! <laughs> SASHA! Well, given the incoherence of this statement, I find it hard to believe it ever occurred. <laughs> In fact, based on the evidence, I find it highly unlikely this Sasha ever even existed at all. <laughs> all right, he fires you because of all the drugs and the wild orgies on archive property. Yes, ma'am. See, told you you'd make a good boss.